been signed for a 9 billion rand innovative nuclear reactor in South Africa. The partners to that agreement are with us now. We welcome Stephen Etkins and Warren Lefleur of Koya Capital and Dr. Kelvin Kane of Stratic Global. Welcome. Thank you very much. Dr. Kim, may I start with you? Please enlighten us about the technology behind the small nuclear reactor system develop, developed by your team in Pretoria. Well, what happened was that South Africa became the first country in the world to start developing a small modular reactor um, some 30 years ago. And this has turned out now to be a really good initiative because the rest of the world is following suit. And we can lay claim to the fact that all the SMR initiatives around the world now are following us. And so we've got a rather advanced system. Most of the other companies in the world are two years old or five years old, nothing like us having started 13 years ago. Doctor, what is the global significance of this design? Well, Nuclear is becoming a big in thing. There's a lot of problems around the world at the moment with electricity. We are not the only ones suffering. And the wind and solar is just not working out like a lot of people hoped. It's just too intermittent. It needs too much control. And it's nowhere near as cheap as it's made out when you add all the system costs into it. And so now there's been significant interest swinging towards nuclear power. And it's my firm belief that nuclear power will be the fundamental power system of the world in half a century's time. And so we're well and truly on the way to the right answer. The big reactors that we've had in the past, like the size of Kuburg, need to be on the coastline or near a very big lake to take advantage of the water cooling. We designed one now that does not need the water cooling because of South Africa not having adequate water available inland. So we specifically went for a gas cool technology that can be placed anywhere you like. And so the significance of that is very great. Mr. Edkin, Edkins, what convinced Koya to enter into this partnership? So I've, I've been doing clean tech for over 20 years. Um, as Kelvin has highlighted, you know, there are issues with solar and wind energy being sufficient on their own to power, um, to give uh, energy security to to all the countries in the world, and so I began looking seriously at nuclear, uh, especially medium and small size solutions, uh, a few years ago, and I think finally we're now at a situation where we are going to see uh, a serious investment in in these new solutions, and so we began a very very detailed study of all the possible teams and technologies that exist in the world, and it's our strong belief that the team with the technology which can be built today and we are sure that it's going to be reliable and um, and economic is the Stratic team. They also, furthermore, have the ability to produce the fuel that's required. So they have, basically, they cover all the bases. They're vertically integrated. And we know with this investment that they have all the pieces in place. Mr. Lefria, exactly what will Koya's role be in this project? So our role is to um, help to get Stratic investor ready. Um, we're going to be working with the team there to prepare them from an organizational capacity perspective. In, in addition to working with international investors to help to uh, raise the capital that's required uh, to bring this dream to life. It's, it's super exciting because, um, you know, I think the first time uh, I met Kelvin, you know, I sort of saw passion. I saw, you know, a deep intellect. I saw somebody who was, you know, made this dream his life's work. And, and you know, working in deep tech, that's what we look for in in founders, right? So we look for people who, not only have the smarts to do big things, but also who brings passion along. And I think that when we saw the, those two things, the only thing we could then do is to think about, is there a role that we can play with the limited knowledge that we have to enable companies like, uh, like Stratec to you know, realize the significant potential that, uh, that nuclear could bring? 
With the energy crisis in South Africa, I think the question on everybody's lips will be, can you give us a timeline? Sure. So um, we've now completed all of our due diligence. It was really important, for instance, to visit the Helen Daba facility. I think that's really strong evidence of the amount of work and investment that's gone into small nuclear in South Africa. That's That investment was made by the South African government over a period of decades. And so we're now confident that we can recommend this to our investors. This is something which we know is going to, is going to work when it gets built. The fuel is there. We can start to ramp up fuel production. And so um, now we've completed that due diligence, we're going to go back to our investors to look to close out the financing that makes um, that makes this plan a reality. It is our strong commitment, uh, and I've agreed this with Kelvin, that we break ground before the end of the year. That is good news. Dr. Kim, what contribution will this project make to South Africa's dire energy needs? Well, it's absolutely critical. We believe we've got the right answer. The exercise here based in Pretoria is entirely private. Obviously, we're working as close as we can with the government, people such as the National Nuclear Regulator and all those involved. But our group has pushed on to achieve what we've achieved. And the link up now with COYA is critical. This has been going on for something like nine months, as Steve had indicated. And a number of agreements have been worked to and arrived at. And uh, so we would be most happy to see him back in South Africa for his second visit. And his second visit ever to Africa, by the way. And so we've got on very well together. And it's, it's really important what uh, has happened so far. And I really am thrilled that uh, the Koya people have got involved with us. Now, Mr. Lefleur, what far-reaching impact do you believe uh, this project will have, not just for South Africa, but for Africa? Yeah, and, that, and that's the exciting bit, right? Because I think that the design that the Stratec folks, and as Stephen mentioned, it's this investment is actually brought to life is very unique in that it is a low water consuming um, you know, nuclear reactor. So these are generation four reactors. Um, it's a passive design, so safety is of is of is of you know great importance. Um, it it has the ability to be deployed as close to the demand as possible. So you know, if if you can think of an in, industrial park or a desalination facility, um, you know, it has the ability to be deployed in close proximity to those kinds of heavy loads, and and which means that it does not require the traditional design of you know generator or generation transmission and then subsequent distribution, right? So and then su- subsequent. Uh, Loading right, so it, it offers, particularly from an African, from a global perspective, the opportunity for you know large industrial users, governments, municipalities, to almost reimagine what a power system could look like. Obviously, impacting significantly the cost of uh, of delivering base load energy, and importantly as well, you know, bringing you know, low carbon solutions into the market. We know that lots of parts of Africa are struggling with this energy transition, with uh, with climate change, you know, as we say, uh, you know, significantly impacting the weather. And water would actually become even more energy, more, more, uh, more you know, um, or water scarcity would actually become even more, much more of an issue across the continent. And so bringing these new designs into the market uh, could not only help Africa, but also help uh, countries across the world to, to manage through these, uh, this important global challenge. Dr. Kim, apart from South Africa, what market would there be for the nuclear energy produced at this plant? Well, the market is vast worldwide. We found within South Africa, we've been approached, for example, by the Premier of Limpopo province asking if they can get eight reactors from them. And we've been discussing that with them for over half a year now. And a lot of documentation has, has gone in. We've also had approaches from agricultural community to set reactors into agricultural systems, which has been most interesting. But as far as other countries are concerned, there's been a lot of interest from African countries 
uh, they very much have realized that they need to go nuclear because they don't have coal and all the other things. And we've also had interest from countries like Australia, Canada, Indonesia, and the, the Middle East. Uh, one of our people was over in the Middle East just a few weeks ago, and he reported that having dinner with the prince, the prince said to him, we really like South African engineers. They do what they say they're going to do, and they finish the job. And what's more, they treat us with respect and as friends, and we really like dealing with them. And so, you know, we're getting those sorts of endorsements, so the market is fast. Now, over the past nine months, you have all probably spent uh, in intense moments together. Are there any anecdotes you would like to share with us? Uh, any comments you would like to make amongst yourselves in conversation? Well, we found that uh, a fun path. They certainly have cracked the whip often enough over us to, to get us to do things, but we are very happy that they have done so. And it's been a, it's been a fun path coming along and fun to get uh, Stephen to come here. At one stage on one of our Zooms, I said to him, like I say to so many, you really should come to South Africa and see. He said, yes, yes, I'll come. I thought, well, he never will. Most people never do. And lo and behold, a few days later, we got an email, I'll be there in about 10 days, and he turned up. And um, Warren and I and my team uh, met him at 8 o'clock in Sanderson in the morning, and he was saying, wow, I don't believe it. This country looks great. Everything looks good. And I thought, fantastic. We can make a good impression on this fella. And since then, we've become firm friends. He spent a weekend looking at animals. I was just hearing a few moments ago, he's never seen an elephant or a hippo before, and over the weekend I saw all of the real ones. So we're thrilled that he's going back home with a number of South African experiences uh, that will really cement in, cement in his mind, and we've uh, arrived at a very good relationship between Stephen and Warren over this time. I was just going to add, um, in, in the last week, um, I've become addicted to Biltong, <laughs> and, and so I don't really blame you. <laughs> and in particular, I like the chili, the like the chili one, the really um, moist chili biltong. I don't think you can get it anywhere else, so I'm going to have to wait until I come back again before I can have it. Any other observations you'd like to share? Because I, from our earlier conversation, I can tell that you are rearing to come up, come back to South Africa. Yeah, I mean, I think I think more more sort of. Um, uh, professionally, uh, yeah, I, re I was really, really intrigued uh, to go to the Pelindaba facility. Um, yeah, that took quite a lot of organization. It's, it's for obvious reasons, quite a secure um, facility. And uh, yeah, that really, yeah, when we drove in, um, yeah, we, we saw one set of, um, uh, there was some water, there was some cooling towers, there was some big chimneys. Um, uh, and then Later on, sort of five kilometers later, there was some more. I was like, wow, this is really, you know, this is a big facility. And I think, you know, Kevin will tell you, but it's, it's several, um, it's several kilometers squared, that facility. So, I mean, and that is a unique, um, you know, a unique facility, which, uh, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't think anybody in the small nuclear space has in the world. Well, that is good to know. You can be proud, Kelvin, Dr. Yes, Kim. Absolutely. You know, here sitting in South Africa, it's so often difficult to convince people around the world that we don't live in mud huts in the bush. And so it's really something that, uh, that we need to spread around. I was recently in, in Washington, D.C. I'd been there before, of course. But there again, saying to me, we actually know what we're doing. We can achieve all of this. And you can see them looking and sort of saying, we only come from Africa, you know. And so to be able to show them something that people believe in and to realize that we really are world leaders in a field like this, that our people go around the world to various conferences and so on and, and wow them when they discover that we actually know what we're doing well and truly and that we lead us in many fields. And uh, so it's been great. And it's really been terrific to have the Koya people involved. And I'm really thrilled at what's happened. Almost a reward for a life's work for you, isn't it? Absolutely. And you know, there's to us, it's a huge amount of money, the 9 billion rand, which will be spread over five years. But people like uh, Stephen is used to this. Over the last nine months, every time we try and contact him, he's in a different country somewhere. I don't think his feet touch ground much in between all the flights he does all over the place. But they're very experienced in doing all of this. And as far as they're concerned, this is uh, part of the course. And so it's, it's been really 
um, thrilling to get to know the fellows, and we have great expectations of what's going to happen over the next few months. Warren, any last words from you? Yeah, you know, I, 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 I sort of had the opportunity to visit the sort of, um, you know, sort of deep, deeply innovative systems over the last four weeks. So I had, I spent some time at the Fusion Lab at Princeton University about four or five weeks ago. And then, of course, as Stephen was saying, we, we, we visited the Palendaba facility. So looking at both fission as well as fusion. And I think that one of the, one of the, the sort of common themes um, across those two visits is how important it is for, you know, companies, people like, uh, like Kelvin to really start to think about, you know, the role of innovation and the, and the potential innovation can actually have in, you know, having a long-term impact in competitive differentiation countries. And so, you, you know, the, the fantastic thing about, you know, living at the cutting edge of things means that, yes, you solve these big problems, but the extension of knowledge creates this huge array of additional things that you actually get. So the unintended benefits of this project would not only be in terms of, hey, you know, we're going to address the electricity demands in South Africa, but there might be a huge array of additional things that we'll learn as we do. And so that, for me, is what's exciting. It's not only the, the things that we're going to solve, but those other things which are peripheral that might actually become solved as we sort of take on this fantastic body of work. So we're super excited about the partnership with uh, Kelvin and his team. And we look forward to, to really doing some great science and, of course, doing, bringing as much of the innovation to, to market as possible. Thank you. Now, those were the partners who had signed a 9 billion rand deal for an innovative nuclear reactor for South Africa. Thank you very much for speaking to Biz News. I'm Chris Stane.